Hello everyone, you are watching this video on Shunt Electronics and in this video we are going to learn about NB-IoT that is Narrowband Internet of Things. This is an IoT network that helps to connect different devices to internet. We will start with basics. First, we will learn about what is Narrowband, then what is IoT and LPN. LPN is Low Power Wide Area Network of which NB-IoT is a part. Then we will go in detail of NB-IoT what is NB-IoT, how and when it was originated, the organization that controls NB-IoT, makes and prepare rules and standards for NB-IoT, then we will see modes of operation and architecture of NB-IoT, then we will compare different IoT networks like LTEM, NB-IoT, LoRa and Sigfox. Then we have three slides on application advantage and usage milestone. So let's start. Let's start with narrowband. What is narrowband? As you can see in the diagram, there are three bands. First is narrowband, second is broadband and third is wideband. We can clearly see the difference between narrowband, broadband and wideband through this diagram. The bandwidth of narrowband is quite smaller than broadband and wideband. How do utilize broadband and wideband in our daily life for internet and mobile communication? If we need to send a string of data through broadband and wideband, the bandwidth of these channel goes unutilized when we send a string of data. And we all know that bandwidth has a cost. The advantage of narrowband is first, it has low bandwidth and has can send a signal with low power over a long range. It also has a high interference resistance. The disadvantage of narrowband signal is it requires high performing filters to pass desired signal without attenuation. And second, it can only send the low up, low data at a time. We all have heard the buzzword IoT. So what is definition of IoT? The Internet of Things is the system of connected computing devices, machines, sensors, animals, people, objects with unique identifiers that have ability to transfer, compute, analyze data over a network without requiring human to human or human to computer interaction. Means, let's say we have a smart energy meter as an end node and we have connected it to server through NB-IoT network. Now energy meter can transfer energy readings, fault condition, etc. to server through NB-IoT network. And that, and that server can analyze that data and take actions. For example, generating the bill, calling maintenance guy, that all through without human to human or human to computer interaction. So this is a system of connected devices that can transfer compute, analyze data and can take actions based on that data without requiring human to human and human to computer interaction. Like NB-IoT, there are other networks also like SIGFOC, LoRaWAN, RFID, Wi-Fi, Thread, ZigBee, LTEM, CAT, etc. that can be utilized as an IoT network. NB-IoT is a part of low power wide area network which is also called LPWAN in short. So lp is a type of wide area network which connects devices over large area and allows long range of communication at a lower bit rate, low cost and greater power efficiency. lp supports a large number of devices over wide areas in comparison to cellular network. The other networks in lp are LoRa and Sigfox. Now through this diagram you can clearly see the advantage of lp -WAN. Now if we see the blue part, that is lp -WAN. the range and geographical coverage are quite high. But the power consumption, bandwidth, radio cost, radio subscription cost, number of base stations are quite low. The only disadvantage is transmission latency. But for cellular networks, these all power consumption, bandwidth, cost are high. Range and coverage are low. The only advantage is they have low transmission latency means they can signal faster than compared with lp or other networks. So NB-IoT inherited characteristics and advantage from lp and narrowband signals. So NB-IoT can transfer data over a long range with greater power efficiency and low cost. Now we know that IoT requires a network that can transmit data over a long range with low power and at a low and at low bit rate. 
but the cellular networks like 3G, 4G, 5G were not optimized for this. So the cellular body, 3GPP, that is third generation partnership project, came up with NBIOT standard in release 13 in 2006. With release 14 and 15, they updated the standard of NBIOT and with release 16 in 2020, July 2020, they said that NBIOT will coexist with 5G. So we can expect a life of 20 to 30 years for NBIOT networks. NBIOT is an internationally acclaimed low power wide area network based wireless communication standard developed by 3GPP for devices that require low bandwidth and a small amount of data transfer thus improving battery life, penetration power and device density and enabling low complexity and costs. All wireless communication systems transmit and receive signal in a particular frequency band like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mobile system, mobile communication system, military communication system, etc. Now, now our frequency band is already crowded and NBIOT has a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz. So here we will see the different mode of operation of NBIOT in the crowded license spectrum. First is in-band operation. In in-band operation, NBIOT uses the free frequency spectrum of an LTE channel. Second is guard band operation. In guard band operation, LTE channels have a guard band between channels to reduce the interference and these guard bands have enough bandwidth to accommodate NBIOT channel. We can see in this diagram that in this guard band, NBIOT is accommodated. In standalone mode, it occupies the channel which were previously occupied by a GSM. So th these were the GSM channels and NBIOT occupies the complete GSM carrier channel. The architecture of NBIOT and cellular mobile network is very similar. NBIOT operates in the licensed cellular spectrum and uses QPSK as a modulation technique. Also use FDMA and OFDMA as an uplink and downlink. Now let's move to this diagram. Here we can see that from this base station core NBIOT network and machine to machine uh, platform, this is the NBIOT network. And the function of this network is to transmit data between this IoT end nodes and the application server. So this application server compute and analyze the data and send command to the end IoT nodes. Through this company terminal, we can visualize the data of these end nodes and control the operation of application and end node. All these end nodes are fitted with NBIOT module. All NBIOT modules has NBIOT chipset and a SIM with unique identifiers. So all these modules are unique just like our mobile phones. This module is fitted with antenna to extend its communication range. The function of this module and antenna is to communicate with the base station and transmit and receive signal from host. Now host is a microprocessor controller, microcontroller which hosts the application and communicate with the module and peripheral devices like sensor. The function of mo host, host controls the end node. For example, in case of smart light, host switches on and off the light. In case of energy meter, host measures the energy consumption. Now let's compare different IoT networks. Here we will compare LTE, Cat1, LTEM, NBIoT, LoRa and Sigfox. These three operate in licensed spectrum, whereas LoRa and Sigfox operate in unlicensed spectrum. The bandwidth uh, will decrease when we move from LTE Cat1 to Sigfox. The data transfer, this is full duplex, this is full du uh, full and half duplex, this is half duplex, this is half duplex and this is also half duplex. Half duplex means we cannot send and receive signal simultaneously. At one time we can send signal and on another time we can receive signal. We cannot send and receive signal simultaneously. These three operates in cellular band. These two operates in sub gigahertz band which is free. This is paid. These bands are paid. <clears throat> the data rate decreases when we move from LTE Cat1 to Sigfox like 10 Mbps and here we are getting only 100 Kbps. For NBIOT it is 250 Kbps. Then we have maxim maximum coupling, expected module cost which also decreases when we move from left to right. Expected battery life. The battery life increases when we move from left to right as as the speed is decreasing so the load on particular device is less and we have a oh, very good life uh, here in NBIOT, LoRa and Sigfox. 
these three requires as these are cellular so these three requires sim whereas these two doesn't require sim then we have modulation of these three the latency which is very important the latency for and cat1 is 50 to 100 millisecond but for sigfox is tw uh, 2 to 30 second and for nbi it is 1.6 to 10 seconds the latency is the time taken between uh, time taken to transmit data from end node and iot node to end application server and from end application server to end iot node <coughs> device transmit power this these are the all device transmit power standards the organization which controls these uh, these communication network these three are controlled by 3gpp that that is third generation project partnership which also controls the cellular mobile networks and lora is controlled by lora alliance and sigfox is a proprietary network the range for these two are medium and for these three is high or very high application of nbiot all application of iot are also the application of nbiot like smart metering smart lighting asset management warehouse management stock management smart parking water conservation alarm and event detectors other applications like uh, industrial iot which is a major application of iot now we will see advantages of nbiot we have just now compared the nbiot with different iot networks what we found is first it has high it is a high density network when we compare it with lora and sigfox the bandwidth of nbiot is higher so it can accommodate the higher number of devices when compared with lora and sigfox it has low power consumption high data rates low cost low bandwidth and extended coverage high security level as this is a cellular network so the security level will be higher in comparison to lora and sigfox it also has mobility like in our cellular networks when we move from one place to another we are always connected with the network similarly when a NBIT node move from one place to another place it is always connected now let's see the usage milestone of NBIT in different countries with the internet of things is expected to reach 75 billion devices by 2025 NBIT network is going to play a key role in that first well, let's see what is the condition of NBIT in United States in United States there are three major companies T-Mobile, AT&T and Verizon all the three has deployed LTEM network for IOTs but they all the three are interested in NBIT like T-Mobile and AT&T has already deployed NBIT network whereas Verizon is also planning to do so in UK and Europe Vodafone has already connected 62 million devices and started open labs China has already connected 100 million NBIT devices and their three major companies china unicom china telecom and china mobile is saying that their nbiot revenue has been rising from 20 to 40 percent per year in india reliance geo service is commercially available from january 2020 airtel vodafone idea and, and bsnl also started the pilot project i hope you like this video Please do like, follow and subscribe Shunt Electronics channel to get more insightful videos on electronics and computers. Please do comment if you need a video on some special topic and visit www.shuntelectronics.com to view latest news articles and tutorials. Thank you.